as a mayor. Very good morning to you. Good morning, Susanna. What do you make of the result, firstly? Well, to say it's a shock is an understatement. Uh, you have to understand that this wasn't a free election to begin with. You know, there were four candidates that were approved by the Guardian Council. You know, they were not secular opposition uh, candidates. These were like former Prime Minister, former Speaker of the Parliament, former Head of the Revolutionary Guards. And to cheat, even with these candidates, is just beyond contempt. Well, let's get this clear. At, at this stage, we don't know exactly what both parties are saying, but we, what was obvious in the run-up to the election, huge turnout. We know it was over 70%. We know that lots of people took to the streets in advance, uh, and people were so keen to have their say, to make their vote count. And we know a lot of the electorate under 30, two-thirds of the population in Iran, in Iran under 30. Now, to get from that point to this point, what has happened? Well, it's, it's, it's obvious. I mean, if you look at the figures that the Interior Ministry is releasing, to say that Karubi had less than 1% of the votes, if you just look at the rallies, the number of people that turned up in the rallies, you would think that how could this candidate only have less than 1%? If you look at the pattern of the results, it's as if someone's given like some sort of equation, y is equal to 2x, and all throughout the regions, it's following the same patterns. It can't be. You know, there should be differences in patterns of voting in different regions of Iran, and it seems like it's the same thing, same allocation of proportions, 68 percent 32 percent uh, it's so obvious that this is this is this is a fraud it's, as I say it's just beyond contempt and to do it within the very uh, framework of uh, you know having approved candidates only uh, just goes to show how narrow-minded the Islamic regime is I don't think you can change anything by voting in Iran and let's not forget the president I mean I heard you earlier saying that you know there were hopes that the foreign policy would change foreign policy is not within the jurisdiction of the president of the Islamic Republic all you could hope for was like maybe a little bit of economic improvement and a little bit less restriction on women's clothing and that sort of thing if people on the ground feel the same way that you do the authorities must be very nervous at this stage about what might happen next well, the problem is that everyone on the other side had an opinion about 12th of June, the day of the election, whether they should boycott or whether they should vote for which candidate. No one seems to have any plans for 13th of June except for the Islamic regime. You know, they, 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 they knew exactly what they were going to do. They've closed all the roads to the uh, interior ministry. They've, they've banned all the public gatherings. The universities have closed. Uh, um, you know, there may be a lot of discontent amongst the population, but is there enough organisation? Can I ask you, Potkin, is there a procedure, is there a mechanism in place for dealing with, I mean, if, if there is an official, uh, if someone officially says we believe this is fraudulent, one of the opposition parties, is there a mechanism by which that would be addressed? They can do complaints in that, but let's not forget, I mean, the, the, the supervision of the, of the counting was done by the Guardian Council, which approves the candidates. Uh, uh, so, again, you know, you're talking about a very, very limited scope uh, of, of, of what can officially be done through the official, uh, official channels. But I think the candidates should have spotted these right from the beginning. I mean, Karubi had about a, a list of 3,000 uh, uh, representatives to be supervisors in, in, in the voting uh, booths, but only 400 of them were allowed to be there. So straight away from that point, they should have, they should have stressed that, you know, something's going wrong and they should have stopped uh, uh, the election there and then. But, I think they just had too much hope in, in, uh, in a fair election in Islamic Republic, which I think was wrong. Okay. Well, Potkin Azamir, thank you very much for your views this morning. Thank you very much. Thank and you. we'll be uh, live in Tehran throughout the programme this morning and try yes. to find more uh, because there is a clearly developing situation there. Now, though, let's see websites blocked in Iran after President Ahmadinejad is said to have been re-elected. At least uh, at official news reports in Iran that President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad has been re-elected. Yes, we've heard this morning that universities have been shut down, BBC websites have been blocked and the main rival candidate has claimed there were voting irregularities. Well, for his reaction, we're joined by the award-winning Iranian political blogger Potkin Azamir. Um, very good morning to you. You're, you're obviously monitoring developments as well this morning. Um, what do you make of the reaction within Iran to what is being announced officially? Uh, well, the, the regime is, is looking to uh, see what the public reaction is. They're mm. sort of like uh, dipping their toes in the water to see you know, how strong the uh, public uh, reaction is going to be. Uh, what I would uh, uh, hope for is that the public look beyond leadership in the, main, uh, in, the, in the four main candidates, because let's not forget, at the end of the day, these were approved candidates. These were regime figures, so they will only go so far 
if the public want to, uh, to, 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 to achieve their rights, they really need to look beyond those candidates to, to take the uh, uh, discontent further. Okay. There seemed like, in the run-up to the election, we saw these extraordinary scenes in the streets. It was almost like a velvet revolution. Yes, and of people coming out and feeling free to openly say who they were supporting. You know, it, it wasn't Ahmadinejad, they were happy to say that. And from John Lyon, our correspondent out there today, in the space of 24 hours, the atmosphere has changed. Suddenly people are feeling like they can't say what they thought before. I mean, it, it seems like an extraordinary turnaround. It's like I said earlier, you know, everyone had an opinion about what to do on 12th of June, who they should vote for or whether they should boycott the election. No one seems to have had any plans for the 13th of June, for the day after the election. Um, there doesn't seem to be any organisation in, 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 in uh, accounting for the probability that they would have cheated. And the possibility was there, even though, uh, I have to say, it is beyond contempt. I was, t I was talking to some people that thought there may be uh, uh, fraud and uh, vote rigging, but they were saying that they were sort of like the, the, the tolerance uh, was about like one million votes here or two million votes here. The, the example they were giving me was if, the, if, if a football match is fixed by a bent referee, you may get like a one nil result become a two one result or a three one result. It wouldn't become a nine nil result sort of thing. But this is just so blatant. I don't think I think everyone is just shocked. You know, it's, surprise is an understatement. Everyone is just simply shocked. Mm. You're claiming um, voting irregularities, but it's interesting what you say about the other candidates. Do you think that they will mount? a protest now, a legal contest, a political contest to the result? What I expect from the, from the main four candidates would be some sort of protest within the framework of the, of the Islamic Republic, within the framework that they're allowed to do. These are regime figures at the end of the day. These have been approved by the Guardian Council. These are not secular opposition figures standing as candidates. Uh, the former Prime Minister, there's a uh, former head of the Revolutionary Guard, former Speaker of the uh, uh, Parliament uh, and the incumbent President himself. You know, they will only take it so far. We really need uh, to look beyond uh, leadership from beyond those candidates and also we really, really need international support, I think. I think this is crucial. Uh, we'll have to leave it there for now. Thank you for your time this morning. And we will, of course, uh, you. bring you up to date with any developments as they happen with our correspondent in Tehran.